Globally, a bone fractures every three seconds and either you or somebody you know has broken one. Usually you want to receive a cast, heal for six to eight weeks, and continue on with their life. However, 5% or a bone broken every minute will have difficulty healing and be diagnosed with non-union, meaning it stopped healing. The process is actually really complex. We think of bone as just this hard mineral, but there are cells inside nerves and a lot of blood vessels. So when a bone breaks, besides a rupture in mineral, the blood vessels break and blood pools in the area. This recruits a bunch of cells, including immune cells and stem cells, which build new vasculature and a soft scaffold, and then add mineral to the bone. Because there's so many steps in this process, any lag or failure in one of these steps can lead to non-union. The easier non-union to treat is when the bone isn't stabilized with the cast, but the more difficult one is avascular meaning that there are no blood vessels and where cells do not function properly. People with diabetes or other metabolic illnesses or those who have complicated fractures are at higher risk of their bone not healing. Scientists have developed some tools to help those with non-union. They can go back in and add internal fixation or add a graft from another bone in the body which requires patients to go through the healing process all over again. Bone stimulation is less invasive but cumbersome, but more importantly, it doesn't really work. It only technically helps some cells create mineral, but we already know that that's not all that happens during bone healing. Since non-union is common, we need to develop a more successful approach which considers the whole bone healing process and that is less invasive than current best practices. Since non-union happens due to failed vasculature, we need to tackle blood vessels as well. I'm currently working on a therapy that would make cells communicate better and more chatty. We wonder, if the two most important cell types, blood vessel cells and bone stem cells, communicate more, will they build better bone? Now, we know that bone healing is a big job and cells need to coordinate to get the job done right. To do this, cells can communicate through paracrine communication, which is secreting chemicals, or a faster way using gap junctions, which are like little tunnels between two cells. Gap junctions are particularly important in bone, as this is how they sense force or how cells coordinate as to where to build or break down bone. Although both are important, gap junctions allow for cells to quickly coordinate and act in tandem, allowing for efficient healing. So, if we know that chatty cells work well together, we want to make the cells more chatty and better organized. Another aspect of bone healing isn't just how well the cells co communicate, but who they communicate with. We need a diverse team to help finish this complicated job. Blood vessels and bones work really well together during bone healing process, so why not make these cells better teammates? If we understand how important this fast communication is during bone healing, we can engineer a system which upregulates connexin or gap junction communication in bone stem cells and vascular cells and make them chatty teammates. We expect and hope that this therapy would help heal bone that originally didn't want to heal so that those struggling with non-union, including the three that occurred during this video, can regain a normal life.